but the uh, cumulative percentage of devices failing, you can see that we have uh, half-lives here approaching uh, over 10 billion hours for ordinary operating conditions at 40 degrees C. So this number of photons in the devices uh, improves steadily. Your goal as an engineer working in this area is to flatten that curve and drive it up <laughs> so that they all fail at once uh, instead of having some early failures and some that last for a long time. Uh, lessons learned. There are no technological secrets. New developments have their place in time and will happen when the technology allows it. You can't do something like the LED and keep it a secret. You can't put it in the drawer and not tell anybody. If you can come up with the idea, there's a number of other smart people out there that can come up with the same idea if the technology is ready. All you can do is run as fast as you can and try to stay ahead or keep up. Also, I've found that many of the most important new developments do not result from specifically directed development programs. They kind of come out of the overflow. The things that happen if you're observant, stay curious. The things that you happen across while you're really working on something else. And it helps to be in the right place at the right time. And knowledge helps. We missed the tunnel diode and the laser diode because we had insufficient background in Physics, sometimes a lot of knowledge uh, is detracting because the people we went to with the idea about the laser diode knew too much. They knew why it wouldn't work. <laughs> so you need enough knowledge to know what's going on, but not so much that you talk yourself out of trying anything new. <laughs> now, in 1978, a friend of mine, Tom Hilton, who also studied uh, he and I gave a talk at Wright-Patterson Air Force Base one day, and Tom went first, and I followed him, and then the fellow at Wright-Patterson got up and asked if it was a requirement that you stutter to do R&D at TI. <laughs> so we, but, uh, it wasn't, but it just happened that way. He wrote a book in which he cited Jerry Pittman and I as the inventors of the light emitting diode, and this uh, quartz watch thing was turned into a web page for the Smithsonian Institute and uh, the uh, URL you see there will get you into that if you do a search in Yahoo under my name B-I-A-R-D this is one of the hits that you turn up Jerry and I are official fossils we're in the Smithsonian <laughs> here's what Jerry looked like back in the 60s <laughs> uh, this tells about the invention of the LEDs and here's what I looked like with my crew cut. Uh, talks about the SNX 100, which was the first commercial LED product that was introduced. Uh, that concludes uh, my talk. Uh, and it's been a very interesting time for me, a very interesting career in the semiconductor industry. I think when I began, the fruit was on the lower limbs of the trees. It was a lot easier to find new things. Things have matured a lot. For a long time, the semiconductor industry just got older, but didn't really mature much. <laughs> but it has begun to mature, and, and uh, things are uh, a lot more determined now. The reliability expectations of people are quite high. Uh, and when you bring out a new product now, it has to spring full-grown and ready to be incorporated in high volume where it'll never make it. Uh, so things aren't the same now as they were when I started. Uh, don't be afraid to tackle new things. Get all the knowledge you can, but don't let that blind you to the possibility of things that uh, haven't been implemented yet. Uh, thank you. <laughs>